22nd of July 2012 of an American in Ireland looking at um, well looking at photography from England as well as some Sunday papers this is a shot done by Veronica Veronica Roland and it's a Russian born citizen Russian born citizen living in London and what they're doing in a piece called Call of the Nations is trying to get all 204 nations represented in a series of photo studies. So, if you live in American Samoa or you're from American Samoa, federal states of Micronesia, Guam, Marshall Islands, Nauru, or Paulu, they're looking for you because they're trying to get all 204 nations and there's, those are the ones that are missing. That's in the Spectrum, which is sometimes magazine article. Um, not as prominent as coverage being given to Marissa Meyer across all the Irish broadsheets. She, 37-year-old, is being called the most powerful pregnant woman in America. She's got a little baby on the way. She's leading up the charge to revamp for Yahoo. Good luck on that. I like Flickr, Marissa, if you're watching. Make it better. Restore it to grace. The Observer leads with young pupils facing lessons in shops and warehouses. It's a story by Toby Helm, Tracy McVeigh about councils drawing up emergency plans to teach people in disused shops and warehouses, magistrates, courts, and so forth. It's happening because population growth is going to cheaper areas throughout London, and it's resulting in some pretty interesting outfits. Shop fitting, perhaps. Um, the premises don't look like a standard classroom. In Ireland, uh, there's some construction money being brought to bear. So some of this uh, kind of um, retrofitting old premises probably won't happen in Ireland. Inside the world news section of the Observer, story about fears growing over Sicily's future as the flow of euro stops and bankruptcy looms. I mean, like, long renowned for its sultry beauty and deadly mafia bosses, Sicily has now been dubbed Italy's Greece, an island awash with misspent US or EU funds, state jobs traded for votes, and a 5 billion euro debt that some fear could push Italy's delicate economy into the abyss. Tom Kington got that story. Italy's basically, they're saying in Italy that Sicily is on the brink of collapsing. And the bureaucracy is what bothers a lot of people. It's like a fog that may not kill you, but it's a thick fog covering you all over the place. Publishers are hunting online for the next E.L. James. Following success of Fifty Shades of Grey, publishers are eyeing authors who self-publish. Vanessa Thorpe has got that story. And why not? Following the success of Fifty Shades of Grey, you might be able to uh, pop your stuff up on Kindle or into the iTunes or the Apple Apple Store and find a publishing deal right behind you. Or just teach people how to write. How to write a blog. The Gentle Author is hosting um, a series that is focusing on use of pictures uh, and writing, relating images and text to transforming conversations into an effective written evocation of personality. If you want to take that course, it's 299 sterling. Or... Do photo walks with Matt Stewart, Stephen McLaren, shoot in busy public realms, shoot life on the street, and that'll cost you 350 sterling. Right? You can shoot, you can teach. Heat is on for the economies across the world as Americans, America's agriculture crisis drives up global inflation. What's going on? The business leader section and the observers pointing out that the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration declared the January through June period the hottest half year on record in the United States. The result going to be felt far and wide as world corn prices have jumped 55% to a new all-time high. Across the back of this paper, it's pretty interesting stuff. I'm going to that one on the front page from Times, where high earners are facing tax on child benefits. Sarah McInerney points out the threshold is actually 100,000 euro for that single wage earner before they start getting taxed um, or means tested and then perhaps tax on the, on the, on the child benefit. Come join the Human Flesh Search Engine, writes Rosie Kinchin. She interviews the editor-at-large of Wired Magazine, that'd be um, Ben Hammersley, and he also wrote the book, 64 Things You Need to Know Now for Then, pointing out that things like the internet, well, these are actual thoughts that, that I would share as well. The internet destroying every business that enters its digital its sites and remakes it in its own image. Government's going to have to adapt to a public who are increasingly used to having an opinion and having an opinion taken seriously. Good book, good topics. Probably teach it out at LIT Connell, where I, where I uh, teach emerging trends. Infighting erupts among the stricken Quinn family, writes the Ian Keogh's front page leading story that the famous collapse of 
once Europe, well, he's definitely Europe's most failed businessman at that point in time, 500 million worth of assets, 500 million euro worth of assets, stripped out from his company to be hidden from the banks, um, and then further a, a trail of um, subterfuge, emails deleted, text messages erased, according to high court documents. Uh, the Quinn's tangled web reads the inside story. It's powerful enough and surreal enough to actually make the treatment for a, a film, Russian, Ukrainian businessman, uh, twists and turns in the shadowy world. Reform what reform? Ask Susan Mitchell about the Minister for Health, James Riley. So what's been done? She puts out a checklist of key promises. He hasn't achieved most of them. It's difficult to see how structural changes that he has in mind are going to provide for any meaningful improvement in health care while the government fails to deliver on the vital reforms that are necessary. I'm going to put this on my iPhone, new deals from Don Deal. Don Deal is running an Android, an Android and an um, iOS app, which allows me to see stuff that we should be selling in our garage and attic. It's simple, follow the money. So Keo's got three or four pieces in the Sunday Times, uh, or on the Sunday Business Post. Sean Quinn isn't actually in jail yet. He's the elder guy, his son is. His acts were on were not uncovered by the Office of the Director of Corporate Enforcement or by the guards, but instead by a bank who's trying to go after him for money he's owed. This is something that confuses me. In the My Media section of the Sunday Business Post, they have an interview with Anna Clark, who's the Advertising and Marketing Manager, and she says, Look, when I see a mobile site and it doesn't have the full blown up version of what I can find on the main website, I am upset. It's a mobile site. It's supposed to be smaller. Let's be just a neat. Charles Sullivan takes over the Reality Bites column for a, for a week from uh, Adrian Werker, who's apparently on holiday. He's talking about the, the um, dromies banging regularly, which is high economic value immigrants trying to get technology, uh, technology uh, visas for them, uh, is a way of putting it. I wonder how Damien Mully, the Irish Twitter king, would think about that. I think it's important to have that. Finally, I'll be outside doing some things not advised by Jane Powers in the home section of the Times, but by the Sancho. They're explaining stuff. Well, hey, look at this in her column. The Tully Nurseries in Ballyball have an urban custard, um, best in show for a plant. And look, Jane digs green sacks, stuff I eat. Something I learned about first on the, on the side show. We'll also be visiting where we got Minnie, uh, the inspiration for Minnie today. Minnie um, is a, a nice little character that puts one of our, our four-year-olds to sleep. Uh, she's also buried in the Cashel Cemetery um, in a grave for a young child. So we'll spend time uh, walking that grave site, practicing our alphabet, and working with things like audio boo. I'm over on Talk Gold on Twitter. I'll also blog at www.insideview.ie if you want to follow my flow there. I'm Bernie Goldbach. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.